everybody's least favorite member of the Atlanta Falcons organization is Rich McKay. Uh, this guy seemingly is free of blame no matter the regime. Go back to Dan Quinn, Arthur Smith, Mike Smith. There's one constant in all of these failures, and it's Rich McKay. I, I, I like kind of adopted this thing for him. Uh, Grima Wormtongue from Lord of the Rings. If you don't get the reference, go look it up and laugh because it's hilarious. He is Grima Wormtongue where he's just whispering into the king's ear, you know, just spitting poison into his ear, giving him terrible advice uh, and going unscathed in all this. And the one national pundit who calls out Rich McKay's role in Atlanta and the Atlanta Falcons failures is Mike Florio. For all Mike Florio's faults, you know, I don't particularly like the guy's personality at least he's calling a spade a spade and most recently he came out with a report that a lot of falcons fans may finally get their wish that rich mckay is ousted of the organization uh that if bill belichick comes to atlanta to coach the atlanta falcons rich mckay may not be able to coexist with that now everybody knows that uh rich mckay i'll get into the actual report at Rich McKay was said to have been out of day-to-day -day operations when the team hired Arthur Smith back in 2021. When we, when Arthur Smith was fired and the Falcons came out uh, in the press conference, Arthur Blank and Rich McKay, we found out that wasn't true. Rich McKay was heavily involved in day-to-day -day operations. Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith reported directly to Rich McKay, who then kind of shared his, you know, experience with them whatever that means and then he kind of reported to arthur blank it is a very unusual management structure no other team really has the ceo other than the packers but they're a uh, you know a public organization so um mark murphy is essentially the owner he has the owner's power now back to what mike florio said so mike florio basically has a source within the falcons that said this is what the source said that belichick and mckay have been at odds in the past over rule changes given McKay's role as the chair of the competition committee. The source predicted that Belichick would take the job only if McKay is completely frozen out of football operations. I don't want Belichick here in Atlanta, but that is a silver lining if I've ever seen one. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I mean, I think everyone is against, at least when you most people are against Bill Belichick coming to Atlanta, but if it rids you of Rich McKay, you know, it's it's, it's kind of like the lesser of two evils, right? And <laughs> listen, as, as much as we've said, you know, Belichick doesn't make sense for the timeline and we want to go younger. And like, if he comes here, it's probably going to result in getting a veteran quarterback, which I don't think is the best course of action. Um, he is he is the greatest coach of all time. So there are some positives here. Yes, it may not be the longest tenure. And yes, we might be right here in the same spot in three years or maybe even less than that. Uh, if he decides to hang it up, you never know with these guys. No one ever thought Nick Saban was going to hang it up. And, you know, just kind of out of the blue, he was, he decided, you know, when it's time, it's time. And something very similar could happen at wherever Belichick goes to coach next. But like, like I said, at the beginning of this, it's, it's ridding you of, you know, the guy who, like you said, has, has been free of blame in all of this. And he's been the one constant in all of these failures over these coaching hires and general managing things and stuff like that. Um, so if it gets rid of McKay, I mean, <laughs> I guess I guess I'm a little more on board than I was. Yeah, it could absolutely be worse. Uh, and you know, Florio went on to say that uh, McKay and Belichick have been at odds uh, in the past over rule changes and things like that. Like I mentioned, you know, Rich McKay sits on the competition. Uh, competition committee he's the head of it actually uh and you know bill belichick is obviously you know old school guy and all these new rule changes most people don't like him uh as fans i can tell you right now the coaches don't like him especially of the old school variety like belichick and i think that if you if you ever needed an answer about rich mckay if you're arthur blank this rumor or this report is it right in the face? It, it smacks you right in the face that the greatest coach of all time, who is the architect of the greatest sports uh, uh, franchise, um, excuse me, uh, I'm blanking. Dynasty. Dynasty. I'm <laughs> sorry, that just completely blank. The, the architect of the greatest sports dynasty ever is telling you that your right-hand man is the problem. You should you should absolutely see it and be like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe Belichick's not the right guy, but I should take this piece of information and really sit on it if I'm Arthur Blank. I, I don't care about personal relationships. Arthur Blank is trying to win a Super Bowl 
He needs to put personal relationships aside. Rich McKay might be a great guy. I'm not trying to say he's a bad guy or anything. This is strictly business. This is strictly, you know, a results oriented business. And Rich McKay has not delivered. I, if you're, if I'm Arthur Blank, and, and if this is true, where Belichick goes, yeah, I'll come here, but you got to get a Rich McKay. And he goes, maybe I don't want Belichick. You should still listen to him and say maybe Rich McKay is the problem. Like if, if the greatest coach of all time is saying it, maybe just maybe you should listen to everybody. Yeah, I mean that's the thing with Arthur Blank, and we talked about it with Alex Anthopoulos and meddling and and not letting personal you know relationships get in the way of your decision making. And that's been my biggest you know nip. I mean I'm not even going to say nitpick. It's been his biggest flaw as an owner. Like. Arthur Blank, wonderful person, philanthropy, everything, you know, yeah. done a lot of great things for this organization. Yeah. But where I get pissed off and where I just don't understand is like, I can separate that. I can be like, yeah, you're a great guy. You're not helping us win football games. In fact, you're hamstringing this entire organization because, you know, you, you even think back and it's not just the Rich McKay's of the world. It's the way he, you know, the relationships he's developed with players and overpaid guys and given given into demands that he never had to give into thinking back to that Julio contract, basically fully guaranteed contract that he gave to Julio Jones. And yes, Julio Jones was amazing. He did not need a fully guaranteed $22 million a year contract going on the wrong side of 30. Like that's just ridiculous. You can't pay people for what they've done in the past. And he just, that's something his entire tenure as the owner of the Atlanta Falcons, he's not been able to separate it. And it's, it's screwed the Falcons more often than not. Yeah, I mean, if you want to talk about, uh, you know, letting your emotions get involved in, you know, business decisions, uh, Arthur Blank is the poster boy for it. Uh, And and you kind of like, I thought he was going away from that because firing Arthur Smith, he went again, he liked Arthur Smith. And again, Arthur Smith's probably a great guy, but. Yeah, it's time to separate emotions from business. Well, that wraps up our show for this evening. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll be back on Tuesday.